Today, I'm going to be showing you five easy text animations in DaVinci Resolve that'll help you level up your motion graphics and video production. And if you want to follow along, pause the video quick and download the project files for free at the link below. Now that you have your project files, let's get into the video. So the first animation that we're going to do is the elastic bounce animation. Now, this one is surprisingly easy to do and adds sort of a playful theme to your video. So inside of Fusion, we need to go over to the effects and then grab a Fusion composition. If we enter the Fusion composition, the first step is to add in a text node. You can do that by dragging it from the toolbar right up here and then connecting it up into the media out. Now we will add in our text and then change the font and all of the size settings and anything else that you might normally change on text. All right, now that it is set up to how I like it, we can go ahead and start animating. So I'm going to go to frame 50 and then add a keyframe on the size right where it's at. Then I'll go back to frame zero and drag the size all the way down to zero. So now when we play it, we see that it scales up from zero to the size we set it at. Now to add the elastic bounce, we can come up to the spline editor and check the, where it says text. So now we can view the spline animation for the text. We'll come to about frame eight and we'll add a point just by clicking on the spline. And we'll drag this, we'll drag this point way up so now when we play it, it'll bounce up and then come back down. Now we just want to add a, in a bunch of other points here that alternate between going above and below our original point. And there we go, we're gonna try that for now. It's really easy to change later. So if we play it, as you can see, we have kind of a nice bounce animation, but it's very linear. There's no smoothness to the animation at all. So let's select all of these keyframes and then hit S on our keyboard. And now if we play it, as you can see, it's got like that elastic feel to it as it's bouncing back and forth instead of stopping, going back, stopping. It's got a little more play to it. Now the speed settings don't look quite right. It's almost a little too slow. So a really easy way to change that is just selecting all of these top points here and then clicking the shape box tool down in the bottom of the spline editor. Now if we drag this, we can adjust how fast the animation uh, goes. Let's say we want to scale the elasticity up a little bit or bring it down a little. So all we need to do for that is grab the top or bottom point and hold down control. And you can see that'll scale both sides at the same time. So we can make this effect way more intense like that, or we can make it uh, less intense by dragging down. Uh, so I wanna go somewhere in the middle. That's looking good. Now I'm going to click on any of these lines and hold shift just so I can drag, drag it left and right. Uh, I just wanna move it over a little bit so that it's just a little bit faster. And once you're done tweaking with your settings, you should have something like this. A final touch just to make it look a lot better is to add motion blur. So under settings, we can add motion blur and bring the quality up to, I'm gonna say around six to eight. Uh, we wanna go up to eight. And now it looks a lot more smooth just cause it has that natural motion blur to it. If this is the animation you want, then the next thing you'd wanna add in is a nice background with a bunch of accent animations. Now a great way to do that is using my Motion Essentials plugin. It has a custom preset library with a bunch of accents, backgrounds, and burst animations that you can add in at the click of a button. From there, you can customize them, duplicate them, change the colors, and do all sorts of cool stuff with them. It'll help you create more professional motion graphics animations and save you a ton of time in the process. There are some big updates coming to that soon, so make sure you stay tuned. Now let's move on to the next animation, which is just the bounce animation. So instead of being elastic, it's going to look like it's bouncing off of an object. Let's add in another fusion composition and add in our text again. Now, instead of animating the size, I want to be animating the center X and Y. So that's like the position of the text. To do that, go over to the layout settings, and now we have the center X and Y. What I'm going to do is just drag it down until we get to the very edge of our composition, because I want it to kind of be bouncing off the bottom of the frame. So I'll bring it down until that's touching, maybe intersecting a little bit on some of them, but that's looking pretty good. Now I'll come to frame like 60, add a keyframe on the Y, go all the way over to frame zero, and then drag it up above the top of the screen here. So now it'll fall down and land at the bottom. Now we're going to be using the spline editor once again. Uh, view this, we can do control F to center it in the view. What we'll do is we want to drag this first point all the way over to about frame, let's say 10. And now if we go like 15 frames forward at another point without moving it at all, we can add a point in between those and drag it up like so. So now if we play that, it'll bounce up and then come back down. And then we'll just keep repeating this process, uh, shortening the length in between these as we go along. All right, so I'm going to go with something like that. And now to make it look a little bit better, uh, let's just select all of these bottom points here, like that, and then hit F on our keyboard. This will just flatten out the keyframe so it 
and rest at the top just for a little, little bit longer. Then we can hit T on our keyboard and we have the ease controls. If we lock these, which links them together, we can add a little bit more ease to these. So now this is the kind of cartoonish bounce effect that we have created. And again, if you want to adjust the timing, you can just select all these keyframes and add the shape box. And then we can just slide back and forth, maybe shorten it a little bit and adjust the intensity of the bounce. So that is my final animation here. And again, add in some motion blur, add a cool background with a bunch of accents, and you have a really good looking motion graphics animation. Onto the third text effect, this is going to be the split text animation. So let's add in another fusion composition and once again, add in our text. And for this one, just to make it a little bit easier, what we wanna do is add in a background node and set the alpha to the zero. So if we merge these up just by connecting it to the output, hitting control T to switch the inputs so that the background is coming in as the background of the merge node, it, it won't make any difference and that's because the background is completely transparent. But what that allows us to do is add a mask going into this merge node that then affects the text. And you'll see why that's important later. If we drag the text up a little bit, we can add in a transform node. And before we do anything to this, we want to copy it and paste an instance. So we do that by doing control C to copy and control shift V to paste an instance. And you can see it's linked by this little green line uh, that you can't, you can't do anything with. But what that means is that these two nodes are linked. So if I change something in one of the nodes, it'll update in both of them. But a cool feature is de-instancing. So if I come down to, let's say, the invert transform, I can right click and de-instance it. So now this control is separated from the original transform node. So if I check invert transform, as you can see, it will not be checked in the first transform node. If I connect the text up into both of these, and then if I merge the second instance transform up, now whenever I move the center X and Y, they will move independently from each other in opposite directions. Now to prevent the overlapping, we need to add in a mask. And we'll do that by adding in a rectangle node from our toolbar. If we view this off to the side, we want this white region to take up exactly half of the screen. So we'll set the center to zero and the width and height to one. So now it is taking up exactly half of the screen. Now let's put these into masks of merge nodes. And if you don't know how merge nodes work, the mask input only affects the foreground input. So that is why we needed that background to be coming in as the background. But if we connect this up into both of them, you'll see that we can only see half of our text. So let's go into the merge two node and go to settings and apply the mask as inverted. So now this second merge node is only showing where the mask is black and the first mer merge node is only showing where the mask is white. So now if we take one of the transform nodes and move it to the right, you can see it will kind of like split the text in half. So if we go to the first frame and hide the text like that, we can come out to frame 50 and then set the center back to default, so 0.5. And if we play that, it will split the text in half and have a really cool animation. In the spline editor, we can add a really nice ease by just selecting all of these, hitting F and then hitting T on our keyboard. And we'll add in a bunch of ease in, bring that up to like 90 something, and add a little bit of ease out. And now when we play that, this is the effect that we get. And once again, I'm sure you can guess it, we need to add motion blur. But because the transform nodes are doing the animation, we need to add the motion blur in those nodes. So under transform, go over to settings, and then do motion blur. And again, bring the quality up to 6 to 10. You can figure out how much quality you need by zooming in and seeing how many steps you can see in your motion blur. If you can see a bunch of individual steps, then you want to add more quality until it's all blurred together in a natural way. So if we play it, we have, again, a really nice animation. All right, moving on to the next one, this is going to be the reveal animation. So reveal animations are really cool. You can use them in all sorts of motion graphics, but we're going to be doing a basic one where the text is revealed by a box. So add in your text, but this time don't connect your text up right away. We gotta do something before that. And that is grabbing a background node, connecting it into the media out and adding a rectangle mask into that background node. Now that we have that set up, we can merge the text up with the background node. So the text is on top of the box. Now inside the rectangle node, let's just set this to be approximately the size of the text and just center it in the middle. Some fonts are a little offset. And now that we have that, we need to just do the animation. So instead of animating just the width and the center position, uh, what I wanna do is add in a transform node. And this is gonna make it way easier. Under pivot, we're going to be adding in an expression. And expressions just make stuff in DaVinci way easier to do. Uh, for example, we can calculate positions of certain objects. So that's what we're going to do here. So we're going to type rectangle one 
dot, and that is going to be referencing the rectangle one node. And now uh, we can type in any of the controls from that node. So let's do center and then dot X and then dot X. And that's going to be grabbing the value of the rectangle one center X control. So it's 0.5 there and now it's 0.5 here. Now let's add, so plus rectangle one dot width. So that's the width of the, um, the box here. And if we uh, do that, as you can see, the pivot point is way off to the right now. And that's because it's grabbing the entire width. Well, we only want half of it. So if we go to the end of this expression and divide the width by two, you can see the pivot point is now at the edge of the box. So in the end, the expression is rectangle one dot center X plus rectangle one dot width divided by two. And now if we uncheck size and aspect, we can adjust the X size and it will adjust the length of the rectangle. So let's go to frame 50, add a keyframe with it being at one, then go to frame zero and uh, bring this all the way to zero. Now, in order for this to reveal the text, let's take the output of the transform one and put it in as a mask to the merge one node. And now when we play it, it reveals the text. One quick thing that I like to do on most of my reveal animations is give the text some movement. So if I go to frame 50, I can add a keyframe on the text and then I can go to frame zero. Now I like to move it to the opposite direction that the reveal box is going. So I'm going to drag it to the left. And now when we play it, as you can see, uh, both are moving in opposite directions. And if we go up to the spline editor and select both of these, control F to set this to view, we can uh, select this, hit F on our keyboard, hit T, and then we can adjust uh, the easing. And now we have a really nice looking reveal animation. Now this one for motion blur, we're going to need to add it in two spots. First in the transform node under settings and then motion blur, you can drag that up to about eight. And then also in the text under settings, motion blur, and we'll match that at eight. And now we have our reveal animation. All right, now onto the last one, we'll add in another fusion composition, go to the fusion page and add our text. This one is going to be done using the follower modifier, which is an extremely powerful tool inside of fusion. To use this, we just need to right click on the text and then uh, press follower and up in the modifiers tab up here. We can see we have the follower one now in order to make any of these controls work You need to add a keyframe on them So if we go over to the transform settings, we can come down to the rotation and let's say add a keyframe on the Z and now when we drag it you can see that it is affecting each of the characters individually uh, with a rotation value but if we don't have a keyframe, it won't do anything. So at frame zero, let's add an expression on the Y and then drag this pick whip to X. So now those two controls are linked. Let's add a keyframe on both of them and then bring the X size all the way down. Then if we go to frame, let's say 40, we can bring the X size back up to one and now they will all scale up. If we go back to frame zero, let's add a keyframe on the pivot controls so that we can actually edit that. And we'll just move this off to the side, let's say right around there. And you can see that's a little bit far to the right. So I'll just come down, grab this point again and drag it to the side. But you can see that's adding a path. It's adding a new keyframe at the frame that I'm on. And that's not what I want to happen. To make this easier, I can select this point and come up to this button here where it says lock points. All right, if I click that, it'll unlock this point so I can move it without it adding a new keyframe in. So if I come to, let's say, frame six around there, I can just uh, put this exactly where I want it to get a nice scale up effect. In the spline editor, I'm going to select this, hit F on my keyboard, and then bring in the E's or add a bunch of E's. So this is what we have now. But the cool thing about the follower is we can add in delay. So if we come back to the follower and under timing, we can bring up the delay here. And as you can see, it's set, there's a bunch of other controls like the range, the order, and all of that. But if I just bring the delay up to let's say one, 1.2, we can play it. And as you can see, each of the characters is offset by 1.2 frames. So they're, they're all animating independently of each other. In playing around with all of the different controls inside of the follower, you can get some really cool looking results. And that is the five easy text animations in DaVinci Resolve. If you guys enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like and subscribe so you never miss out on any new content. If you guys want to check out my other motion graphics content, you can do so by clicking this playlist right here. If you want to check out my Motion Essentials plugin, you can do so by clicking right there or at the link in the description to get 20% off. But with all that being said, I'll see you guys next time for another video.